Hello, today I'm going to show you how to install the rear camera on a A6 C7 and uh, all the steps which you need to perform this uh, retrofit. So here are the steps which I was thinking to. First, disconnect the battery. Second, removing the glove box and the climatonic electric control unit. Let's see what does that mean. So the glove box, which is here, you'll have a couple of, of screws here and here and underneath. Then the climatronic unit and the electric unit, the multimedia. So that uh, you will uh, pin those cables which are coming from the camera in the back of this unit then uh, you will have to come with the cable in the boot so one options will be to try to tuck it here underneath but uh, i won't go for for that because it looks quite unprofessional so what i'm going to do is to remove those parts here and over here but for removing this part here i'll have to remove the whole trim over here so this will be at uh, point three removing right side panels and seal because we have also have a seal here also in this point three is still this which will have to be removed then point four is removing rear seat plus side uh, pad right i'm referring to this so to access the screw on this you'll have to remove this removing boot cover and handle this is on point uh, five so i'm referring to this over here and also to this to this cover so we'll start with this also this i'll have to remove and everything uh, after everything is open i will uh, per uh, perform Step six, installing camera and handle uh, and cabling. And uh, with everything open, I will uh, put the battery, I'll connect back the battery and I'll perform a test for uh, and reverse order for all those steps. So after the testing is successful, I'll go again with all these steps to, to put them back together. And uh, the last step is to calibrate the camera. So I have done a handmade print of the VAS635 and the calibration. I will perform it with the VES interface because uh, with uh, vacuum it's something which i don't quite understand so would be better to perform with this you have also a guided uh, way to perform this so what they really want from you is you put this in the back of the uh, car this guidance in the back of the car somewhere like here have to be in the middle and also the distance from the center of the wheel to be uh, equal on both sides and then to run uh, all this software to do the uh, calibration yeah for this i'll use those things so that uh, i will be uh, more precise uh, in Audi dealer they have a specialized uh, tool for this and also this uh, looks much better than the ones which I have uh, done it uh, at home but yeah hopefully it's working also 
the cables are all completed so all I have to do is just to put them together I have ordered it from uh, Aliexpress it's like half price of the normal price I'm curious how uh, it will look like in the end but uh, so far the quality looks quite good and also I have all the procedures which uh, are split into steps for instance if I go for looking which pins I'll have to connect from the cable into the MMI in the front here I'll have it I'll have a description and also I wrote down by, so that I won't look now for all these details so it's like that in the front uh, behind this uh, multimedia unit I'll have those pins which I'll have to come in which I'll have to come with the cables over here with these two pins this will go in the uh, can uh, junction this will be the ground this will be uh, the positive which will be over here uh, somewhere in this um, fuse box and uh, the rest are just connectors which you'll have to plug uh, them uh, into the camera and into this modules module step one disconnecting battery you will have to disconnect just the negative don't have to undo them both That was it. We leave it like that for the moment. And we are going with step two in the front. Part of the step two is removing the glove box. We have a couple of uh, screws, like this one over here, like this one over here. But I think there will be more. So we have one here, one here. One over there and there are a couple of screws over here the good part is you can use the, the same tool so this one will do the work and uh, then uh, carefully when you remove it don't pull it just like that just take care that they can be some uh, uh, cables over there like uh, one cable for this or depending on the version you may, might have here a, a CD changer also forgot to mention that you also have to remove this one here before removing the whole thing otherwise it will hold it fixed so now I will have to unscrew the last uh, screw so they were five in total three here at the top and one here and one in the other and underneath in my case the only connector is this one here which i'll have to unplug it and then the glove box is uh, free to go outside this is how it looks after I have removed this connector. So like I said, here are uh, three screws, one here, one here, one here, and two over there. Another part of the same step two is to remove the 
climatronic unit, climatronic control unit actually. Uh, and uh, as they recommend is to go with this tool underneath the unit and to hook it, but I just have this one. After I'll pull it uh, enough, there is also a retainer here somewhere I think in the middle as they shown which will have to be unclipped so let's see how it's working if it's working with one hand seems that this part came off maybe on the, this side we can pull it as well yeah so it's okay so that one went quite easily didn't have to do anything just came out like that now i'll have to remove the connectors here and here and here so you have those things over here which will have to pull them up I think uh, like that and then I think you'll have to press it here in the middle and I think should come off again not an easy task with one hand so I think I'll just drop the video and I will show it later now they have been all removed this one was quite a trouble to remove it i think you don't have enough uh, space here to press it so that it will be released but yeah next step is to remove this so over here so one more thing which i forgot to mention is that uh, the Audi um, provide a special box with all the caps which you can put them over here so that uh, nothing will go inside like dust or something else but uh, yeah, for me it won't be necessary because I will do this uh, very quick and I doubt that something will come there inside the connector the second step is to remove this screw over here there and then to pull this unit out let's see if I can do it directly it's not that easy because of this lever in the middle okay i think now it's coming out Saying that this should come like that outside just handle with care you don't want to damage anything all right not sure but i think the connectors let's see i'm not sure how to disconnect this maybe i should put my hand here underneath and try to remove the connector because from this side i don't have any access okay i'll do it and i'll let you know how it was so first of all you have two connectors here underneath 
one is here and one is on the other side over here and I think after I remove these two connectors here and here it will let me to pull it out a bit more so that I can remove the connector in the back we'll see this so I was right pulling out this connector over here which was here now gave me a bit more of the access and I can put this thing out so that I can see all the connectors which are behind so here are the connectors behind you'll have to remove them one by one just very careful use your intuition for this how it's working first one is quite easy just have to take this like that and then to pull it then the second one I think you will have to press this there is a pin over here and then to remove it so here you'll have to press it and to pull it out but I cannot do it while filming the other one is exactly the same just push this inside and then pull this thing up and the big one you'll have to push this here I'm not sure if you can see something so you will have to push it down and then to pull the whole things up like that so after you push that down which I already did this thing should come off like this so like that that's done this is how it looks like so this is from the front and there, in, in this one, we will have to come with uh, our two cables from the camera. So, as I shown you here, we'll have to come in this, in port, in uh, pin connector B, in uh, slot 12 and 6. 6 will be the negative. Is, uh, with the description and 11 will be the positive 12 sorry okay so I think it is somehow uh, mirrored I mean this this over here it, it's how it's looking from uh, behind but when you pull this thing outside the connector then you will have them here and also I think you can read the pin numbers or maybe not no there are no pin numbers on it so on the blue connector over here we'll have to go in pin 6 and 12 which is uh, somewhere in the middle close to the middle so will be this one over here and here so 12 is the positive this down and the one which is up is the negative and should be port 6 and we should put the pins from behind and also I think we'll have to remove it before we do this job yeah looks like that here it has something so maybe from the back you can remove this and uh, we'll have to come with the pins from with the pins which are uh, on the cable of the camera as i suppose you have to leave lift this pin up with a tool maybe something like this and then to push this back and it will come out from behind let's try with one hand I'm not to show you but I'm not sure if I'll manage 
whatever you you got idea after you have this uh, pulled out then as i said you will have to put uh, the cables here the positive down and the negative up from which are from the camera that's how the cable looks like so we have here this one this connector which is coming over here then we have these two connectors which will go also over there wait i have to take them apart then we'll have those can connectors which will go to the junction over there then we have this which is going in the fuse box also in that behind the cover then the negative which can stay on the body of the car then the other side of the cable has these two connectors one here and one over here this is the handle with the camera and then the only one which is going in the front it's this one so this will go in the uh, multimedia unit and as i explained earlier like this so the recommendation is that uh, you will go through all the other steps to remove everything so that you will go with the cable from the back to the front because it's easier rather than to pull all those cables in the back or to cut the cable or whatever so the best way is to remove everything and then come from the back of the car in the front in that uh, blue connector over there and uh, to connect them now we are uh, moving to step three removing uh, right set uh, panels trims whatever they are and uh, we'll start with this part which is in the middle because it's laying on the top of the one here and without removing this you will have uh, troubles removing this one here and then also that one is uh, laying on the top of this one so you wouldn't have been able to remove this so first removing this part then this trim then we are moving to pillar a in the front and we remove also that uh, plastic uh, trim and then we are moving here to pillar c and we are removing this part and uh, i think uh, that's it so here are the procedures like i said without removing the first part on the top you cannot remove this this is uh, the left side but also is the same way on the right side even easier because you don't have the handle for the bonnet which was quite uh, difficult to remove and then like i said this part which is the same way on the right side to remove the upper part of the trim you will have to of the trim of the pillar b you will have to first go down with this one on the lowest position then also you will have to remove this i have removed it in another video there is nothing uh, hard in this you'll have just to take that cap which is laying here on the top which i cannot do with one hand and then there is a a clip which you'll have to push it down so that it will release the the whole belt and then you will start with uh, disassembling this part so like that you will have to put some pressure from both sides and then to pull it like that from the top that side i have already done it now it's coming the other side over here like that
and now this part over here. So you will have to swivel the trim inside the car like that so that it will be released from that catch over there and then to pull it down I'm not sure if I have enough force with one hand so I will use both of my hands it has been eventually released so this is how it looks like now all you have to do is to disconnect uh, this connector for the climber in the for the rear sides if you have it this is uh, how it looks like after it has been removed all you have to do now is to remove this uh, climber connector for doing this i think you'll have to press wait a minute I think you'll have to press that little metal part which is there uh, just uh, above the Audi logo and then you could release it. The easiest way for doing this was to uh, insert the screwdriver over there and then to pull it like that until this little uh, catch over here will be released from the connector the way to open the bottom part of the trim is uh, like they are saying here you should put your tool for opening the trims and maybe just like that The same on the other side and then you should just pull it up and uh, should come off. I have just slide up the trim so I have put my finger there underneath and I uh, pull it up and now the trim just came off. So that's the reason why you have to pull the trim up so that it will be released from those catches over here so these I think uh, I'll have to remove them out of here and to put them back over here when I'm doing the installation part otherwise won't be possible of the trims from pillar A you will have first to and clip this trim over here you can do it with bare hands there's no issue with that so there is just uh, here a catch and over there is just a plastic uh, ledge which is coming somewhere like that so on the installation you'll just have to Put it this way you have to push it up and then to press it there on the bottom now this one is free to go so I'll use uh, maybe this to remove it or maybe not let me think what's the best tool for doing this maybe this Too much space over here. So maybe still one of these. A better option. Okay. I think the best is starting from here. I'm not sure. I think this can also come up with the bare hands. Because they are just clips. Yeah, so I was right. And 
there is a, by my experience there is a clip which is like that so after you remove all these three over here there are like three you will have to pull it the other way from the side like that like that yeah okay so uh, here they are one it's over here and then the rest are here and uh, here there is another one and another one so they are just four clips when you will put them back you'll have to put this back where it was before so in uh, in that hole over here to be like the other ones and then you'll have to to press it again and you'll have to hear the noise when it's clipping with this piece of metal together so when this one is coming into place you should uh, hear a uh, noise of uh, clipping this one will come over here and this one where you remove this you put it here and then pack back okay so that is done we are not ready with uh, this step with step four with removing all because i still have to remove this part the trim for the pillar c but because i don't have too much access to it i will just uh, do it like that i will remove this the seat <coughs> and also the side pads over here so here is just a screw underneath this but you cannot access that screw because of this and uh, this is easy to remove you'll just have to pull it up and then it will come off so you'll have to use a bit of uh, strength and uh, don't forget also to buy those things which you will have to exchange it afterwards otherwise it won't stay as good as uh, before and you would have uh, easier it would be easy to remove it but also won't stay uh, the same like it should be also some other clips you can take uh, just in case uh, you're not uh, sure that they will come uh, easily off without damaging them so yeah make sure that it will look like before don't forget also to disconnect the heating if you have a rear heating and here you go so like i said this one would be damaged and you won't be able to reuse them like uh, they were before the only screw which is holding this side pad over here is this screw not sure if you can see something it's quite dark so over there is a screw so not this big one this uh, has nothing to do with it but there on the side is one after we have removed the side pads now we can remove the seal and also this trim just pulling this way to you will do the job <coughs> at least should do or maybe not no okay I see what's the problem so you have these here which want to go just to pull it this way but you'll have to pull it inside something like that <coughs> maybe i'll use the, those tools which are specialized for this actually i've changed my mind because it's useless to remove this it will just give you more work so here you have all the access in the world you need to put that wire over there and to come with the wire here so that you can go in the boot with the wire we have reached 
0.6 removing boot cover and handle handle I meant uh, this one over here so uh, what we are going to do is starting with this part over here just removing by pulling like that and we'll come outside then those parts on the sides over here you have a pin which you'll have to push it inside then uh, there where is the the triangle you have to unlatch this and to remove the screws which are there after that we are moving to the cover there are a lot of clips which we'll have to remove and the last time you will have to remove this part over here which has over there two clips and uh, I'm not sure what is there but we'll find out so first here we will start to do this then to remove those things and then this part should come off like that also don't forget to take this out So the instructions are not quite clear in the documentation to remove this part over here you'll just have it to push it this way in that direction so that this one can escape from uh, the hook over there from this hole now it's down release this part I'll have to uh, push this pin inside and uh, when it's inside I can get this, uh, this out and uh, I can open this part over here but there is a problem if I push this inside it will fall over there and I don't have access to put my hands over there to wait for the pin when it's coming so first I will uh, remove this part over here I will hold one of my hand here underneath this uh, plastic uh, cover and with the other I'll push this pin so that when it's falling through this uh, channel over here will fall directly into my hand so I won't lose it somewhere in the car because uh, I don't have other one carry out the luggage trim removal we'll have to take out one two of those uh, pins which are here and then this one which was there and then take this part aside this is how it looks like those pins so all you have to do is to stick some, something here in between and uh, to pull it out from this so that this one will come easily out because the only one which is uh, keeping there stuck is this pin so if you remove the pin then uh, this one should come off easily and uh, then is the second one which is uh, right there I didn't expect but this one instead falling down like I thought over here just uh, went this way like that and fell on the ground now all we have to do is to remove those things here and doing this you have just to stick something over here and to push it outside but with care like that I'll show you how it's working so it's like that Sorry for the focus, but it's not quite working like I want. 
so you can put a screwdriver over here and then to try to push this part which is on the top something like that so that the catch which is there will let it go so now this part I think it's done this fell on the ground no worries Here you have it. And here are your cable. Removing the holder for the triangle, you have to press this one down, the other one as well, and then it like that. Let's see if we can this as well Here are those catches. And now all those clips which are everywhere on the sides. Now uh, you will still have this one, the handler here. And uh, there is a cover over here. And I think you'll have to remove it first before you can access the screws over there you can see the screws okay after we are uh, removing those screws then we'll use such a tool like this to remove the locations of all those clips so they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And uh, I think, and hopefully the location is accurate because I try one of these here. Then the next one should be there. So someone here. Let's see. Here, yeah, done. So I have removed two of them. I won't show you the whole process, but they should look like this. So bear in mind this image when you want to clip them all and proceed like that first with the row A, then row B, and the last one C. But first, don't forget to remove this one over here which has two, two cross screws. Before going further with the last two clips, which is uh, here and here, because all the rest is already done, uh, they are saying to remove also this. They just are saying with a screw, screwdriver. So uh, yeah, I'll just put the screwdriver over here. And maybe like that. And now the last two are here. So here I 
think. I cannot go there. I think I need some other tool. Maybe this one. Okay. And then this one. This is done. Yeah. It's also done. So the last screwdriver which I have I, I had here fall off because I couldn't remove it earlier. So there is no issue, I saw it on the floor. And now I think the whole thing should come off hopefully. Okay, that was it. So everything looks fine. This one I didn't remove it. I mean this uh, part because I've seen that I can just do it like that. And now here we have the access through the to the handle. So this one over here, and this one is the one which we are going to to replace. So, uh, yeah, no, let me check. This is so the one over here. It's coming something like this. So, somewhere here underneath this, so we have also to remove this plastic part here. This cover is quite easy to remove. The just have to press it there on both sides and it's coming out and there we'll have to put our camera so this is the old handle we have to unscrew these two screws and to replace it and all the way back to go with the cable so uh, like that and like that and over here then there will connect to the fuse to the mass and also to the can junction which is here and then all the way back till the front till the central unit and to connect it there with two wires here we have it the new handler and the old one just when you remove these two screws there in the back don't forget that there are still some clips on the sides on both sides and then also to release this connector over here because this is uh, the handle now all we have to do is to put the new one to insert the connector which was in the old one and these two new ones to connect them to the cables which we have uh, purchased fitting perfectly into location without any screw or whatsoever I have already pulled the new cable over here you can see I have attached it to the old one and uh, I'm coming like that and here I'll have to connect them together and then to put the cover over here and also to connect them over there. I have already 
mounted the cable into the box fuse over here and here to 22H and 22L I have already pinned the can wires so these two so this is uh, quite easy to remove it you just have first to put this aside then to press this then you will get the whole connector outside and then you will have to pull this up to remove the cap and also you will have another purple thing over there and some pins and then you can uh, take the whole unit outside and you will have to pin it to 22H H and L so to these pins you will see that there are 23 pins uh, per each side and you will have to put it here and uh, from here you can see that uh, it's going up to this uh, module which is uh, the system uh, control unit for the reversing camera over there so this one over here now i'll just have to put uh, the negative to the body somewhere over there and uh, the other cable has been already pulled over here this will go in the front in the multimedia unit when i put the fuse box uh, back there is that uh, screw and i think the best is just to put this negative directly to the body of the car so i'll put the negative over there like that and then I'll screw back the fuse box over there. I've also connected the mass, which is over there. There. So here is the module into its right place. Then there are the connectors, these two, the other one, and also here there is a 5 amps fuse which has been put for the park assistance and uh, also like i said here are the can wires those now that i have brought those two cables in the front these two one is the positive, this is the positive one and this the black one is the negative so we have this blue connector over here and uh, we will have to put it into this slot over here which will be the positive and into this one over here which will be the negative so these two negative positive so not the first one from the left but the second both of them bottom will have the positive top will have the negative so bottom will put this transparent cable or white whatever and on the top will put this negative this black one they have been both inserted so as you can see there is now something over there so there are the pins this is the positive this is the negative over there now i'll put the unit back and uh, before i'm starting to put all the panels back i will just uh, uh, test it shortly I haven't mounted the unit completely, so as you can see I just put it like that, so that I... And here is also nothing mounted, because I just want to check it. So I just started the car. Okay, let's see the test. Oh yeah, I think I have to code it first. Let's try to activate it to the green menu. I cannot remember pretty well where was it. So 
maybe not. Maybe TV no, no system. No. Media. No. I'm even not sure if uh, reset is helping or not. Maybe work should have worked also without uh, reset, but yeah, it's not a big deal. So, so so far there are no errors, which means that I didn't touch any wrong cables. Okay, so one more time. Okay, and here it is. Yeah, it's pointed somewhere into the air because uh, my uh, boot is open, but I think we are there. What we just have to do is to put all those panels back, but I want to film the reverse order of this. It's enough the, uh, the installation and uh, all this process is just easier as it was with uh, removing them so later I will uh, proceed with uh, calibration of the camera but uh, so far we are good okay now is coming slower the calibration part so what do they want from you is to have this one in the back of your car to be in the middle exactly in the middle of your car then from uh, the middle of your wheels so exactly in the middle of the wheels uh, you will have to measure the distance to here to the black line so uh, and then from the both of your wheels so from this one here on, on the other side as well the distance should be equal so this one should stay in the middle of the car and the distance from the black line to here to be around one meter uh, uh, 500 or something like that so i think the range is between one meter uh, 30 and one meter uh, 60 or something like that and uh, you will just have to write down how much you will get on this so I think I will try to uh, do it like one meter one meter uh, 50 so one meter and a half so I will adjust it that much till I will have one meter and a half it's easy to remember because those uh, input data you will have to give it to the VES when you are uh, calibrating the camera Here, just to take care to be straight in the middle of uh, your uh, wheel and also to be perpendicular with your car doesn't matter which uh, method uh, you are using to establish that this one here is perpendicular so that when you measure with that one it, you won't have any any trouble to get the right distance so you can use a 
thread or uh, yeah whatever uh, tool you you think that uh, it will work so that this one will stay perpendicular on your car and also uh, the wheels in the front they should be also aligned so you can check that in the application to be zero uh, degree the angle of the steering wheel and uh, that should be fine also don't, don't forget this should be on a plain surface so i'll still have to work a bit on it to make it completely plain and uh, to be straight here so uh, you'll have to and also to uh, measure the distance between the the ground and this so because this data you will have to extract from the whole uh, height of your uh, camera which is uh, over there till the ground and then extracting how much uh, it's the height of this in my case it's like uh, 30 millimeters now uh, we'll start uh, the calibration procedure we have already put the cardboard behind the car and uh, we have already connected with VES and uh, what you have now to do is uh, to uh, let me check this to let your steering wheel to be completely straight this you can check it with the app then to have all your doors closed and then just put the contact but don't start the engine also don't forget to have a fully charged battery and uh, I think we are ready to go with the self uh, diagnosis I suppose haven't done it before diagnostic sequence has been finished now we have here all those things don't know for which reason the camera has been grayed out so I have uh, just uh, identified the control unit and then after that that one appeared here for the calibration which I wanted from the beginning actually okay I'm going to perform the test on the calibration done so I'll have to measure ground from the enter the measure ground clearance of the calibration plate in millimeters so this is like 30 then uh, is the distance from the rear axle in millimeters which i have put 1500 okay and uh, is a stretch version china no it's not enter the measure ground clearance of the camera lens perpendicular to the ground this i have measured and it was 850 millimeters dot then the rear camera takes two minutes while calibrate and progress delivers no pictures okay this takes two minutes okay so on the display nothing happened yet 
but uh, over there the execution of the test is working please wait until calibration successful no false appears okay done this is phase two do you want to repeat the calibration no done okay i think the calibration has been done successful so this error shouldn't pop anymore and uh, we are done i just have to clear the other errors that's how it looks like after the calibration i'm not sure if there have been any changes or whatsoever also don't forget to code the can gateway with the new module because uh, otherwise you'll have uh, you will receive that it's incorrectly coded so in the installation list you will just go there and pick up uh, the camera so this uh, has nothing to do with the functionality but with the errors which uh, will uh, throw it when when you are uh, going to scan the the whole unit okay so i think it's 6c this one backup camera okay save coding code accepted now let's read the fault codes shouldn't be any i mean okay let's clear the code okay and here it is no fault code found don't forget also to code the unit of the camera itself looks like that mine it's a saloon so for instance if you have a avant instead of saloon you'll pick up this because there is no saloon version over here uh, I have read that uh, you can put uh, a7 version which will just work fine so as you can see the last uh, digits are 13 and uh, I think the rest will be fine if you just copy them like they are over here